G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. I think this afternoon we're going to try and start the old 5911 Z door. Um, it's the same day as we picked them up, but a separate video obviously. I haven't looked at it. Just what he wanted for it, I couldn't get it out of there quick enough, so he was happy and I was happy. So we got the four cylinder in it, just like the 69, looks like the same sort of tractor really. The 100, it's got the three cylinders, as you know, if you've seen that video, there's the air cleaner there. She has been underwater, but apparently it's all been drained out. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, new oil, it's been had ATF down the cylinders. So, for that price, I wasn't, I wasn't letting it go. I don't care what's wrong with it. I thought today we just took a battery up and see if it's going to, if it winds over, we might even try and prime the fuel up. And I did notice, apart from that crease being there, there's a full of water, that sediment bowl there. I'll drop that out and see what we can't do with her. Just going to set a battery into her. <coughs> It hasn't been that long since this has been going, a couple of years maybe, but it's just more the uh, fact that it's been under a flood and uh, it's about all really, I mean it's, they were using it as far as I know. Just race up and get a block to put under it, she's going to roll. For those of you who didn't see the previous episode, Obviously a Zedor 5911, um, picked it up fairly cheap, if you haven't seen it go back and watch it where we picked them up, but I'm going to try and start it up, um, just see if it winds over and see if it's, we can get fuel up, and I don't really know the history of it, yeah, and as soon as pick, pulling it on they go back and check that out. Dead or she's just got nothing. Let's put a load tester on her here, see if we've got what's going on. Certainly got over twelve in it. Not a spark, there's nothing over there. Like the earth lead's not leak, uh, working. I've only got two volts here. If I put it straight on the post, I've got 13. Let's try and earth her out with a jump lead here. Bob Clark over there.
suppose I should make sure it turns over the bar or something. I just just going off what he said, but. She winds over fine, easy. She's winding, but it's not fantastic. Might set a better battery on the other side there. I'll take you all around to see. <clears throat> Look straight to her. She might. full of water she might need cleaning out maybe a job for another day <clears throat> Battery's more than enough to start it. We'll have to pull that starter off, I reckon. <coughs> Just full of water, I'd imagine. Certainly a bonus that it's not locked up being in that much water. So go back and see the video of where we loaded them. You will see how high the water got, and this was apparently went under. So again, not a problem at winds. That's one of the biggest things. I'm going to leave this one here, but I'll uh, I'll join it in with the next one when we pull that off. So it's the next morning here. Look at the frost here. Look at this beautiful morning. It's about 7 a.m. here, Sunday morning of the long weekend. I'm going away this morning for, just for the night, so I can't do too much today, but I had to come over and get some tools ready for something I've got to do when I'm there, so I thought I'd take the starter off the Zeta. Everyone's still asleep over at the house. I brought a coffee over, which is you don't see too much of in this channel. So I'll just pop that starter off there and see what's going on inside it. I'd say it's full of water. I just thought I'd come outside and enjoy this morning. It's actually really cold, but it's lovely. Sometimes you've got to pinch yourself and think you're I think it's all a dream living somewhere like this, but it's it's not a lot of hard work and money, but it's well worth it. There we go. <clears throat> so 
So, from this lovely Australian morning, this dirty old Czechoslovakian machine here. I'm not knocking Czechoslovakia at all, I actually love these machines, I've now got three of them. Why I don't know, but I do. So, I'll set this up on the tripod, we'll pop that off and head into the shed. I don't really want to go in the shed with this lovely morning, but that's what we'll do. We'll pop the back off that and see what sort of damage the water's done. It's a little bit darker around here for you blokes because the sunset's coming up the other side there, but we'll do what we can do here. See what you can see. Looks okay through the lens, so I'll see how it comes out when we edit it. This here is a reservoir for, it's got two hydraulic master cylinders on it and it's got hydraulic slave cylinders in the wheels of these. If you're wondering what that is, most tractors have got a mechanical linkage. These have got hydraulic. It's a bit of a downfall for them, but they, they seem to work fine. Just after they've sat around like this, you've, you've generally got to put kits in them. But see how this one is the hose has been tied off so unless it's had water in there from that flood I'm not sure but it's all readily available on eBay if you want to look further than that and get more expensive stuff but eBay stuff's fine for this if you're not if you're just playing with it like I am Hands are really cold this morning. Nothing we can't handle. It's probably warm for some of you blokes around the world, but it's a cold morning for here in Sydney. I know, Jeffrey, if you're watching, you're probably laughing at me saying it's cold, mate, but. It's a bit cold, it does get a lot colder than this, but it's a fairly typical morning for this time of year. It's just so beautiful, I should be just sitting in a chair looking at it rather than work on this. What I like to do. off. Looks fairly good inside that flywheel housing. Don't know that water could have got in there. You think there'd be an inspection plate somewhere on it. I thought that may have been full of rust. Here's a plate over here that's not sealed so I don't know how far under she went. Not really concerned either. Um, Okay, we'll head up the shed and pop the covers off that and see how she looks. This keeps getting better and better. It's beautiful. I've decided to put a board on the back of the tool gear here. Um, just so I can be out in the sun and do it. Dark in that shed. It's not dark, it's just... The natural light's a lot better. <clears throat> I don't think the problem's in the actual solenoid because for one, it's working, and two, well, two, it's a sealed unit. But I went directly to the post on the actual motor and um, it didn't make a difference so it's, it's telling me the contacts inside are, are getting, are working. Look at the water in her, dear oh dear, I wonder if she's not working. You can all see that. Fairly ugly. I 
wonder it even worked at all. That's what we're dealing with here. One of the brushes, they can't rust. So there'd be one opposite that I'd imagine. And the same setup. To shear the wires off it. <coughs> That's just soaked in water. Another brush. Geez, Dan, that's cold. Yeah, yeah. Have a see. Water in that. Well, okay, everyone, I've got it sprayed. Just did some WD forty here. Um, let it soak into that rust. I'm going away for the night, as I said. Um, should be back about beer time tomorrow, and we might sneak back over and see if we can't kick her up and take her for a blat. Blow all that down, clean it all up, clean all these contacts up. 
clean the contacts up there and uh I mean it was spinning over just it was only off off one of the, one of the brushes was it in my experience so, well two but she wasn't getting the full polarity so well, however those electrical terms work it's getting the full 12 volts but not the she wasn't getting enough power so let that soak up we'll clean it up when we get back tomorrow time for a couple of jars and um, see if she goes I may make a video, we're going down to my in-laws place to see them for the long weekend, plus he's got an old Holden Rodeo down there, a diesel one that that's stopped and um, he's asking if I can bring some tools down and help him with that, so there, there may be a video in that, but we'll see, if it's not a, if it's a bigger job there'll be a video, but see you tomorrow. Hey everyone, we're back at the starter, I've been away, I've done quite a few things actually. Actually, just went next door. Um, got alpacas next door to me, and, and and one of them came in, and I don't see the neighbours a whole whole lot. And uh, ring the bloke up, so he came over to get his alpaca to hunt it back in, and um, so what are you doing with those tractors over there? He had an Oliver 1800 and a oh, I think it's a 554 Inter or something. He said, well, "Come and have a look." So I went down. And said, what are you doing with it? He said, I'm not doing anything with it. He said, if you give me what you, what you, what I paid, take it away. So, that's what I did. I mean, I haven't paid him yet, but we agreed on it. And it's only next door, so I can take my tool ute through the gate. And, and I bought an inter off him as well, so we get the Oliver going, then we'll take that home. That'll be a future episode. I've got to get some money together first. But, and that's two more, so that's four tractors I've got in the one week ending. It's fantastic. Probably going to do a video for you through the fence. And you won't mind if I go back over there, but I think I'll save it for when we do get them going. So back on the starter here, you can see these brushes are meant to be spring-loaded. <coughs> I'm certainly no expert in electronics, but for those of you who don't know, that the springs hold it against the contacts here, so they'll need cleaning up. And that day they're not moving at all, as you can see. So that would have just would have been arcing and carrying on and they meant to float with with all that and so there'd, there'd be a bad contact here those are the earth these are the two negative ones or the earth the chassis ones and these ones you saw me pull out a the sorry get in focus here in, in the uh, the positive ones so these aren't they're not they got no contact on the here at all they would have just been minimal minimal electricity going through those so we're going to strip this apart clean it all up I did have it soaking in WD when I was away for a couple of nights, but sort of seemed to have sucked it all in and not done too much at all. But we'll blow all that out with the air, and <clears throat> I think that's the only problem with it. We're inside now, as you can see, because it's a bit cooler. It changed from that that morning, beautiful crisp morning. Now it's a bit cool out there, even though the sun's up. It's the afternoon sun now, so. So here's the positive ones, so we'll just give them a quick scuff, they're still pretty clean, but even they were stuck, I had to dig them out of those, as you've seen, and see where the water level was sitting in there. So we'll clean this up and give it, just give it all a quick clean and that should be it. Solenoids, I'm sure is fine because I bridged <coughs> with the jumper leads, put 12 volts straight to the motor and when the solenoid was engaged and it made no difference at all, so it's, it's telling me it's not the contacts in here, it's... It's, this is the problem, which you can see, I should be able to push these in, but there's no chance. Those screws are really tight. <clears throat> I'm going to assume that they're okay, because if I snap those... I'm in a world of trouble. <clears throat> I guess being that tight, they couldn't have corroded behind them anyway, so I might just try and get the brushes out and clean the rest of the housing up and just see how it goes. I do not want to snap them.
Let me just clean it all up where it is and put it back in. Just give that a blow out on the, with the camera turned off away from the camera so it didn't go everywhere. It's not great, it's got a little bit of rust on it. I think it's going to work. <coughs> Glass within there, away from it. Looks very handy. Now floating nicely. That'll do. Positive one to clean up here. They're not too bad, they won't stuck these. But Okay, <clears throat> that's ready. We'll just spray brake cleaner and draw a bit of that WD out of it. But <clears throat> it all seem floating, hopefully all the contacts are nice. So now we'll clean the contacts up on this. I should really spin her up in the lathe and I'm sure it'll be fine.
and rusty. Thin nut that. Okay. Well, I can't see any reason that that won't work. We'll go and put her on and see what happens. Right, everyone, we're back over at her. She should quickly bolt her on here. Guys, we might even give her a wash. All these pine needles off her. Take that back off and hide that loom behind it. I want to pull all the wiring out of it, she's fairly rough. Well, put a battery on her and see what happens. I'm just putting another earth lead on her here because you see when I used the, the jumper leads the other day, that earth lead wasn't getting contact from the battery to the other terminal on the other end of it, so that was pretty weird. But Probably should have left it somewhere better than that. It'll do till I get it going. See if she's going to fire up and everything and play with it later. Or it can stay there. It's just in the way you foot a little bit. Sit the starter and see what happens. Nothing at all over there. Like a few little sparks, that's about it. I thought it was working though in something else. Let's 
this is another poor connection. Still nothing, it's got to be a connection somewhere. Alright, he found the problem with the contact around the other side there, so, okay, so give her a go now. Wow, wow. Definitely working now. Well, I'm not going to play with the valves, the next thing is to get some fuel up around it. You can see this thing here, I'll take that off. So, watching now. Crack this over there when we picked her up, but that's that's just all water. Bit of a gauze there; it's just completely blocked. And as you can see, that's still water coming out of the tank. <clears throat> may have to fix this kink here so she gets a full flow of diesel, but you'll probably drain that tank and. It smells a bit fuel in there, but it's, it's, it's a lot of water. You can see the, see the crack in the cap here too. Wouldn't be helping it at all. That's still all water there. Tank here, she just blocked up. I'd say it's all caught in that kink. So we've drained the fuel tank. I'm now going to change those filters. Some off the 4911 down the back that I didn't put in, so we may as well fit them to this one. I'm sure they're the same. I'd say the water's got through into these if they've tried to start it. Apparently, they tried starting it, but it couldn't have gone with all that water in there. So that's that's all water there in that. Plus the filter, clog with soup. Probably make a coffee out of that. All water in that. Okay. Just put some more fuel in it while you while the compressor was building up. Pull this other one off. Actually, these are the same though, look. What's that one in front of your hand there? Oil. It's for oil. You know you're going to pump now, eh? Yeah. Injectors. What you get for pipe? 
cling to the injectors, they should clean themselves straight away. Yeah. Then. Can you pump through the pump? Can yeah, you? it's got a valve in there that holds a head of pressure, and the rest bleeds off back to here. That should clean it out, shouldn't it? There's fuel in it. Yeah. <coughs> Pop, although he's been trying to start it, fill everything up with water. Anyways, on a look. Well, that's it. Crack the injectors and see what happens. See if she fires up. She might not have many hours on her. There's leaking on that. Oh no, she's had a good wash being under the flood roll. That's wet on that one down there, isn't it? Yeah. Got all the covers and everything where the grass gets in. I'll give her a wine so she. You got the pipe on it there. Something there, wouldn't you? I've done a bit, I've done a bit off screen here, um, I know some of you don't like swearing, there's plenty of it, but all this was full of water, all your, all your cam followers here were all stuck up and so were the, so were the followers that pushed the plungers, so the rack's still stuck, that's my next thing, but I've freed all the followers up and the, and the, and the followers up in here, forgive me if I'm shaking, I'm holding the tripod here. So you can see down there, I've taken all the delivery valves out of it and I've just give those pins a light bump back down and they've all freed up. So the next thing is you can see the governor control rod in there. You can see the surface rust that's holding it, so governor still looks okay. It's obviously had some water in there and sweated, but you can see the, the rust on that shaft there. But if we can clean that up, I think she should be right. I thought it was scrap metal there an hour ago, but <clears throat> I've got a bit of confidence back in her. This might be able to Let's zoom right out, but you can see this, can, this chrome area here is what I'm trying to... I've sprayed it and just rubbed a bit of the rust off. If I can get, the, get a screwdriver in there or something. Just sort of lightly. get that moving either way. You can see they're all trying to move here. So 
Got a lot more movement, but still not ideal. Everything's free in the governor, it's just the... One of these are a bit stuck somewhere. If she goes, that heat's really going to help her to get all the oil up around it, loosen everything up. She keeps getting stuck, but... Well, I'm going to say that's free enough to try and crank that up. Just quickly put it back together and give her a go. I've got the exhaust manifold and everything off. I'll turn yours off again. Hey everyone, I've got the pump back together. I've spent hours on it. Freeing it all up every time I put it together, another plunger would stick. So I've got it to a stage now. It's squirting out of three injector lines, but I didn't try it long enough to see what happened with the fourth. So they gradually started coming in. So, I'll give her a go, just see what there is. Probably going to be a stuck valve. I haven't lifted the covers off, which I probably should, but it's getting late in the day. I want to see what happens. Maybe at the end of this Hello. episode, maybe if it doesn't go. You can get, you can get it to start running on a couple yeah. of those valves, might free up. Hello everyone, welcome back. It's San Diavo again, I've sort of had to wait another week to play with this, but last week, as you saw, we, uh, I, I don't even know what we're up to, but I can only get fuel to come out two of these delivery valves here, and then it wasn't coming out these two, only when it was turned off. So I've, I've worked out that these haven't got a stopper See some pumps have got a screw along here and I assume what they do is stop the piston turning so the whole piston and everything was turning with the rack and what that was doing was putting it out of calibration with the with the helix in the in the in the plunger. So when I say piston I mean cylinder, so the when the when the plunger when the rack turned, the whole piston was turning and wasn't doing anything, but then it had let go and leave it in another spot, so after some research, there's not a lot on these, they're Czech, made in Czechoslovakia, but they're similar to Bosch and any other inline pump. So I figured out they've got actually got a keyway in the in the in the cylinder there or in the in the bore that it w would I imagine would the screw would go into. So I've just lined that up with these. That's what these marks are for here, and tightened all these down. They must just pinch them to hold them from turning so I've done all that and now she's starting to blow smoke so I've been working on this thing for hours trying to get everything freed up it's that full of water and rust and it's just been let sit too long so 
I'll set this up on the tripod now and I've bled it all and then we'll see how she goes. Just gonna put this plate over the governor here just so she's not spinning round in the open. I don't know what that fan's gonna blow everywhere. After I get her going, I'll give her all the gurney and take those covers off, just make sure all the valves are getting <clears throat> getting oil and there's no rust up in there. If she goes, it's going to be time for a beer. About half past one here Saturday afternoon. As I said, it started at five o'clock this morning. I got out of bed at four and then done five hours. And then came here to get this going. I've been working on it ever since, so. And amongst other things. So I've bled all the injectors, I've got them tight. Smoke started coming out when I tightened them up, but I haven't fired it, so. You're gonna see it for the first time with me. So, let's make sure these are all lined up there. Okay, here we go. Hopefully I can control it. The rack seems free enough. Definitely worth 500. Bloody good. Now we'll park it up and probably never use it again. Put that cover on her. I'm just going to take the manifold up the shed, cut those off. I'm going to get the muffler off that three-cylinder one I've got. 
and set her all up properly so it's done then. Uh, I've just finished one off camera. I had a little bit of rock and roll on in there in the, in the ute and I didn't want to, I've got to turn it off to film so I thought I'd drink that while the song was playing now. Now it's all quiet again. So I'll pull this off. Hopefully she fits. somewhere for the hornets to nest in there. Hopefully they block it right off. Okay, so Australian made muffler these and you haven't got a tractor unless it's got one of these on it. That's all there is to it. Go and see if she fits. I've got the manifold bag on her. But that muffler I just pulled off the three cylinder one. The pube part I had a different angle on it and the bolt spacings were different so I think I'll have to buy an exhaust like a I think it's two inch or something like a donut and, and then you can cut your own angle so I'll make one up on her um, but we might give her a go now I've checked everything over she's well anything that like he said he's changed all the oils at the engine all looks clean transmission all looks clean power steering all didn't get any water in it because it's it's sealed Got brake fluid, I've got the brakes connected back up there, hydraulic brakes on these. Hopefully it'll bleed itself up going down there. The other one generally does. It runs out sitting there and you top her up and <clears throat> so I'll take I'll get her going again and, and um, take you through a drive on her if she moves. The clutch might be stuck, I don't know. I just I don't think it was when we loaded it, but JD was sitting on it, not me, so I'll try and get her going again. She will. It's been a, been a couple of hours now, so. First bit of water's gone into a fuck. <clears throat> Starting to get excited. Just far enough away from the spanners, the bastard. Fuck. Look at this here. 
Looks like she's blocked, she's not coming through the tank. Nothing running out there. She can't have this on the big jobs. Oh, look at the fucking thing. As much as you flush them, they always get a bit in them. It's just far enough away from the toolbox, which is just amazing. Just turn her off for a second. Alrighty, I've got a cool tube and a uh, brought a shifter down so I didn't have to bring a handful of non-fits. Oh, look at the fucking thing. <sighs> you think she would have made it further than this being under three floods? You really would. stripping that when I put it back on cross threading it or something like that. Have yeah, a look at this here, see? It's got fucking fuel in it, but I'm sort of beginning to wonder if she's got a tube going up inside so I've stopped picking up sediment off the bottom because oh no, look at that, look at the gunk in it. Full of porridge. Look at this bust. And that's all good, but she's. As you take the stick out, it stops. Hold your comments back for using shifters. I'm not carrying a shitload of spanners down here. It's a bit <laughs> Like sitting on the lounge, having a couple of beers, getting on eBay and getting some fucking aftermarket parts from just to get them going after I've worked on them when it gets too dark to play. And then they'll sit in the, in the, in the postage bag on the workshop bench and we never fit them. Sleep some money. Stir all that up. Look at that. We're away again. Probably have to take her off. And... Well, she should get another 20 or 30 meters. Yeah, the chainsaw going down the back. That's my dad. down to see what he's up to. Well, I know what he's up to, but give him a look at her. And, uh, that was clean before we left. Have a look at it. <coughs> it's not ideal. Probably something I'll get off eBay. Believe it or not, there's a lot of parts available for these. We're spending a few under on her getting some bits, we'd probably be able to use her. Slash her or sneaking some trees out of the bush for firewood or whatever. Something to drive around when you're having a couple of, couple of snacks. Needs a hand primer too, which is the standard on these three zooters I've got. Just whack her off here without bleed, without cracking any of them screws, and she should go again. You can hear it return to the tank. Okay. Well. He's up on the old flat top here. Actually, I'm not going to set you on the ground. She's leaning over a bit. A bit like an exotic view of her here. 
She's like a bloody one of them flash sheilas on Instagram. Get, get them right down and taking a shot of her. See how she goes. Hopefully the battery's flat, that'll be good. <laughs> Local fellas here wanted to come down and see what the noise was. I'm swearing and going on out of here. Both looking look. So I've just cracked the injectors, bled those off camera. I'll give her another shot here. She's had enough again. I was gonna say, wasn't in too high of a gear and she just stopped. Fucking bastard. Fuel well, all you good people, she stopped about seven times um, after that first one. I didn't bother, didn't bother um, recording any more of it because she just kept stopping. I was covered in diesel, so eventually got her back here. There's a little gauze in that sediment bowl there. Because there's so much sediment coming through, she's just sucking that in, blocking that gauze, and then sucking the gauze in. So I'll have to get the tank off her, flush it out, and, that, and that's all that's wrong with it. I mean, the brakes started working, they started bleeding up. Quite pleased with it, actually. The clutch is smooth, the transmission's smooth. And that's all I can really tell you. Probably do a bit more work on it. I may not video it, I'll get some parts off eBay tonight. Jesus, uh, like I said, and, and um, <clears throat> next one will be the Chamberlain. We might even do that now over a couple of beers and a bit of music. And may not record that whole thing because sometimes it's enjoyable to have the music going and not explain everything that's going on as much as I do enjoy it. So thanks everyone for watching. Remember Facebook, direct message me if you like. Um, a lot of you are doing that now. Please share with your mates. A lot of you tell me you're doing that, which is great because it does go up, so something's happening there. And um, merch still available. And thanks everyone for watching.